We are live. We are live on Facebook, right? We are. And our interview is going to start here in just a second. I've got Risa here. She's going to take the reins as soon as I get us all set up. I just want to make sure that I have got this ready and the link. Let's see here. How did I do this yesterday? I want to share the link to the event like I did yesterday. So let me see if I can do Share. this. Okay, okay, I got a mute. Let's see, that's right, I'm gonna share, here we go. Copy link. Now I'm gonna go to the event and we will get this all shared to the event. That's gonna, this is gonna take me just a quick minute, everybody, bear with me. I just have to kind of scroll around Facebook here for a moment. And okay, everybody, um, if you are joining the event, I'm going to share this here in just a moment. And I'm going to put it in the discussion. It looks like it might be going. Hang on here. All right, I'm gonna copy this link in here and we're ready to go. Okay, so Risa, go ahead and take it away. <laughs> I, don't I just wanna tell everybody how this came about. Yeah. Donna has been doing these amazing interviews like for the past, how many have you done now? I have done 10. Okay. okay, good. So I decided let's put Donna in the hot seat for a change <laughs> <laughs> and ask her all the questions because she has this wonderful ministry. It's like Breathe Life Ministries, right? Yes. And I want to start un in, in an unusual way. And I, okay. I, want, I want to Donna that it's going to happen. There's a few quick fire questions that you will have to answer. Okay. okay. What book is on your nightstand right now? What book is on my nightstand right now? Oh my goodness. Oh, it's my book. I don't know if I have it in here. It's a book that we're studying um, at church. Mm -hmm. It is um, by Kenneth Hagen and it's called The Believer's Authority. Okay. And so it, it kind of takes you on a walk through the book of Ephesians and teaches you about who you are in Christ and what his salvation accomplished for you. Okay. So take note that it sounds good, right? The next yes. question, what's uh -huh. your favorite verse from the Bible? I think um, the one, you know, it changes, but the one <laughs> that really it does, it changes and it seems like it changes based on what, um, what God's kind of working me through. And honestly, it, um, it's if he, or excuse me, um, Romans 12 to, um, to not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay. It gives me so much hope. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. We will return to that one. I have another uh -huh. question for you on that okay. one. Okay. So next question. What okay. is in your purse that might surprise people? Oh, what is in my purse that might surprise people? Um, a pocket knife. Really? Why? <laughs> yeah, I always find myself needing one <laughs> at the oddest moments. And, you know, if I need to like, like break a seal on something or open or... an Amazon package. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so is it, is it an army Swiss one? Army it's kind of, yeah it's not i wish it was an army swiss one i haven't been able to find one of those but it's it's just this little um it's a little good year <laughs> pocket okay, knife okay. <laughs> okay, you sound as if you're a handy woman okay so the next <laughs> one is if you want to play hooky uh -huh. what, would, what would your ideal like they look like oh tuesday <laughs> when i went on my motorcycle ride 
Um, but yeah, I you ride it, like motorcycles. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. So I, um, I, I, pre, it was a pre-planned hooky day on Tuesday. So I pre-recorded my transform Tuesday and I had it, um, on an automatic premiere. And then, um, on Tuesday, I, um, took off on my motorcycle and I rode the Smoky Mountains and uh, went up the Dragon and uh, it's a windy, twisty road in the Smokies and then went out the Cherahala, which is a, this beautiful mountain road that kind of goes along the, a ridge. So, yeah. On, on your own? Uh-huh. Oh, that sounds lovely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your favorite memory? Oh, okay. That's easy. Um, meeting my husband. Okay. The and night I met my husband. It was a spaghetti we need dinner. More details. Come, come, come. <laughs> it was a spaghetti dinner. Um, oh, about 18 years ago. Um, and uh, I met him through his sister. His sister had asked me if I would help her. I didn't know each she even had a brother, but she had, um, she and I were a little more than acquaintances. Um, we would always seek each other out at different events and um, and check in and see how each other was doing. Well, she had asked if I would help her with a charity dinner. Um, and um, I was like, sure, I can do that. And um, so I was at this charity dinner dance, uh, passing out spaghetti and her brother shows up and he was just drop dead gorgeous. And, <laughs> okay. yeah. and, um, and uh, 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 fast forwarding, um, uh, uh, another one of our friends inter actually introduced us and we just became instant friends. And then he took me out on a date and that was it. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. So, okay, Donna, do you think of yourself as an author? Would, you, would that oh. be the big thing that you um do I think of myself as an author I it, that's definitely one of the things that I am okay so um how many books have you written I have only written the one I am working on my second so can we see that first book do you have yeah. a copy there right there <laughs> toxic to transformed okay so what's it about this is a this is a devotional. Um, I love devotionals. Um, I always have. I you know they they're just they're they're a catalyst to get you into hearing from the Lord through His Word. And um, when I decided to write a book, I thought, well, this is this this seemed, seemed writing a devotional seemed very approachable to me um it because you know i journal a lot mm -hmm. and um i journal my devotions as you know so i'm like okay that seems really approachable so for a first book that's you know a, that seemed to just make a lot of sense and then what this particular devotional is about is it, or is for the it, it i wrote it for people who have been verbally and emotionally abused mm -hmm. um because i went through a lot of it um i i went that you know my through growing up and then my first marriage with that was very much um present and but what i learned was because i was in devotional so much I, I learned that the word of God is, um, it, it's medicine. Yeah. And it, when you're going through those points of pain, the word of God, there, there isn't a point of pain the word of God doesn't address. Yes. And there isn't a lie that the word of God doesn't reverse and show you the truth. But it's almost back to your favorite verse yeah. of the Bible, yes? Could yes, actually, it really is. Um, it really is. I mean, that is, when I think of being transformed, because 
the world wants to the world wants to conform you and label you it wants to label you based on whatever your weakness may be mm -hmm. It wants to label you if you struggle with um, alcoholism, it wants to label you an alcoholic. If if you um, are in an abusive relationship, it wants to label you a codependent. But the word of God says, no, that is not you. That may be the pain you've walked through. That may be the pain you're walking through, but it's not you. Mm -hmm. okay. And and. Um, I've literally seen people transformed, but I mean, people other than myself, I've seen the product of God's word transforming them and renewing them. And so um, that's why I wrote the book. When you're in, in an abusive relationship, the people in that relationship want to label you. They want to label you with labels that are not you they may want to say you're clingy you're weak you're uh not intelligent you're not beautiful but the word of god cancels all of that and says no no you're beautiful you're valuable you're intelligent you're capable yes i i think i should give a little bit of background for myself sure. I'm, I'm a life coach and that's I think my favorite verse from the Bible is like almost the one we take captive every thought and make it obedient yes. to Christ. And that's exactly what I do with my clients all the time is just wipe out the lies and usually use God's word to do it with. So that resonates very well with me. So mm -hmm. how did you structure the book? How did you? Um, come about? Well, I, when I first started it, I just grabbed all my journals, as many as I could find to help me remember my own journey. And then I I started it with just kind of telling a little bit of my background. But uh, basically it's a hundred words that are short and easily digestible. Anybody who's really in the very beginning stages of healing and transforming from a toxic relationship needs something that isn't overwhelming. Yes. If, if there are any, you, go ahead. If, if you say it's hundred words, is that like every day's little devotional is very yes. short? Okay, so that's yes. Right. And but there's no rules. So if you wanted to read the whole book in one sitting, you can do that. Okay. If you wanted to land on one ver one word and just stay there for weeks, <laughs> you can do that too. That's why I didn't make it by days. Okay. I didn't do a hundred days. I did it a hundred words. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so I do, I, I wanted to put a person who's walked through an abusive relationship is used to being controlled. Um, if Again, if they're anything like I, it, it's like every move is structured. Every word, everything you do has to be done a certain way. So it's like walking on eggshells all the time. Yes, uh -huh. yes. Whereas I wanted this to be something that they had all the power over. Okay. They could choose how many words they did in a day. They could choose how often they got in. Like I said, if you want to camp out on one or two words for days or weeks, that's fine. If you want to move through it all at once and then go back and look at, look at the ones that stood out to you, you can do it that way. If you want to journal it in a journal, you can do that, but if you want to draw or paint or sculpt or talk into a recorder or video blog, you can do that because there's journaling exercises okay. with each one as well. So there's a word of life, which is a word that is just encouraging um, and uplifting and true. And then there's a scripture to go with that. Mm -hmm. And then there's a journaling exercise. But that's actually, you know, it's to be that concise is not that easy. It's it, you have to be very disciplined to really break it down in bite size information, if I can put it like that. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, 
it was, I think in some ways it was easier for me to write concise because this is my first book. And again, when you're journaling, you're not really going on for days on end. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're typically, you know, at least for me, some of my work, some of my journalings were like very, very long, like three or four pages long, but um, that was when God was really, you know, talking to me heavily, you know, um, or I was just really needing to release a lot, you know, mm -hmm. um, but for this, I mean, I would like some are as short as I, what is uh what is one that's just like I mean there's there's one in here that is just like super super short like a sentence here it is make this declaration I'm free nothing from the past has any power over me I'm hidden with God in Christ and that's it but there that's also something that people need to spend time processing mm. it's a simple truth but it's one to really process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and spend time considering but i really love how thoughtful you were about this like people who feel that they are very controlled instead of give, making it too structured there's some structure we always need some order oh. like god but you did that and then how can I be creative about this and if people want to spend like you said months on this I'm free and you know journaling about it again and again so yeah do you have a favorite one yes <laughs> um it's actually the second one the the, the very second word and that you know the purpose of abuse seems to be pretty universal. It's the need for one person to exert power over another. And by and in order to do that, you have to break that person down. You have to deconstruct that person, but not, not in a good way. <laughs> You're dismantling identity. You're dismantling confidence. You're dismantling self-respect. And when God comes in, he, he embraces you and transforms you. And the first thing he does is crowns you as royalty. And that's what this title is, is royalty. Being reborn through Christ Jesus means we are eternally changed. The shame and guilt are washed away in a tidal wave of God's amazing grace. Jesus took all of it on the cross and it died with him there. When Jesus resurrected, he opened a supernatural doorway of eternal life for you and me. Spectacular. In that awesome moment, a completely new reality is born a whole new state of being. You are now a son or daughter of the Most High God. You are his prized possession, a precious jewel beautifying his crown. You are accepted and walk in his favor. You are royalty. You have been entrusted with authority. You have vital purpose. That's very powerful. And and what's the general prompt there? Um, the journal prompt, I'm, the I'm general prompt on that one. You is don't have, do you have a picture of that? Perhaps that we can. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Actually, I can show you. I can share um, screen with you. Do you have this specific one? Yes. yes. Oh, that's good. There, there it is. is. Then people can read along. Okay. Yes. Yes. I'm glad you reminded me because I do have this. Let me see if I can get this. Here we go. I'll blow it up. There we are. Okay. There we are. It's beautiful. There we go. Okay. And your general prompt then is? Is when you think of yourself as royalty, what comes to mind? 
Oh, yeah, that's, it's open ended enough, but it's also thought provoking so that people will come up with good ideas there. Oh, yes. Yes. Did, yes. Did you, did, is this book, is it self published? Uh, yes, it is. Um, it's available on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And um, you can um, either order it as paperback or put it on your phone as a Kindle. Okay, as an ebook. Oh, as yes. an ebook, yes. Okay, it's it's yes. beautifully done. It's like I like the you know it's it's simple but it's very striking. I really like the layout. It's beautiful. Oh, thank you okay. so much. Thank you. Okay, so are you going to stop share now? So I want to see. Yes. yes. There okay. we go. Okay, so what is the kind of feedback that you're getting from people? Um, doing? you know, the feedback has been it, one. I think one of the most precious pieces of feedback is from a gal um, that was um, being mentored by a friend of mine. I haven't met this gal yet, but uh, the, my, my friend was mentoring her and um, she was going through my book as she was, um, she had just escaped an abusive marriage. And she would read this book every night to help her go to sleep. Oh, how precious. Yeah, yeah. She would sit with uh, my friend and over the phone, they'd read an entry each night before she would go to sleep so that she would have that particular word in her head as she went to sleep. Um, did, and, did, go ahead. Did you always know that you wanted to write? You know, I did. What's so funny is that I had a terrible time in school with spelling. And but yet, at, and so writing was something that scared me. Um, but at the same time, I would, I loved holding pens in my hand <laughs> and pencils. And I loved to just sit there over a page and just I want to write something. <laughs> I would sit there and stare at a blank page or I would just write what the weather was like outside, <laughs> you know. Okay, so um, what got you started? Actually, I touch on it in the book at the very end. Um, in my bio at the very end, it was a it was a really precious moment. Um, I was a freshman in college and um, the school that I was going to was Alaska Pacific University in Anchorage. And the it was very small private college. And um, the president of the college was teaching a class that we were all required to take as freshmen. And he his very first, you know, uh, lecture to us was on journaling and he announced that he was going to require all of us to keep a journal and turn those journals in each week and of course my heart just sank <laughs> I, I was I was like no <laughs> and I was like I could just imagine him with his red pen going through all of my spelling and grammar and <laughs> and I was like, no. And then he goes, then he, I think he saw the looks on all of our faces and he was like, okay, listen carefully. He goes, you're only going to get graded on whether or not you actually have content in your journal. So if you turn in a blank journal, then yeah, you're not going to pass. But he goes, as long as there's something in it, that's all I care about. And he goes, I will never correct your spelling. And I was like, really? I will never correct your grammar. All I'm going to do is read what you have to say and offer some encouragement based on what you put on the page. What a wise man. Oh. It's breaking people out of that, you know, it's, it has to be perfect. Let me just... Right. But can you imagine if we gave ourselves permission? I'm going to cut myself some slack. Oh, wow. I, I'm not going to criticize what I do. I'm just 
going to get started, right? And we forget that sometimes we can do that for ourselves. We can right. get ourselves going. But I'm sure your grammar and your spelling improved. There are probably no grammar mistakes in your book. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. There's no grammar mistakes. Well, and the thing is, is, you know, I learned from that, that, you know, and it, well, you know, another really encouraging thing that was said was actually part of a, a, a class I took. And um, it was it, as I was writing this book, I took a class. And one of the things that they said is just write. You can't edit a blank page. Yes. You can edit any mistake you make. And then they go on to describe all these different helps that are out there now. I mean, had word processing been around when I was in college? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was the best invention ever. Yes. Like, yeah. You know, I homeschooled my kids and I, well, at, at some time I bought them a writing course, how to write well. Ooh, yeah. And this guy, one of the things that he, sort of told homeschooling moms never never allow your kids to write with pencils oh. because then they spend ages and ages you know erasing things and making it perfect right. teach them to write in pen and when they make a mistake just you know cross it out cross it out and correct it it takes away all that anxiety of perfection oh goodness yes Absolutely. That was the biggest breakthrough I ever experienced was when he told me he didn't care about spelling and he didn't care about grammar. Yeah. All he wanted was what was in here and in here to get down in here. Yes. Yeah. And, and you've been a journaler your whole life. So, you know, ever since, well, see, that is when I really, really got started. He, he, he awoke in me, the writer. He awoke in me the, he, the, the poet. He awoke in me that freedom to just put it on a page. Yeah. Yeah. Poet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, what I've been told is that I write poetically. Okay. Um, I'm not, well, I'm a lyricist. I write music, but I, 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 I um, Poetry, I'm, I'm more of prose than, but I, I write poetically and I do lyrics. I, I do song lyrics. Okay, so that's yeah. like a different ball game. Yeah, yeah. And do you enjoy that? I do very much. I haven't written any, any music in a long while, though. It's probably been close to five years since I've written a song. Yeah. So why is that? You know, you're too busy with I, the books. <laughs> I think I think my creative energy is just transferred right now. Um, I see that with my husband too. You know, when he's directing his creative energy in one way, the other tends to get put on hold. And then when he goes starts redirecting that, then <laughs> you know. But you said something about a second book. What's that? Yes, that is. Um, I'm going to do a series. It's going to be the transformed series. <laughs> so the second book, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> this was on <clears throat> renewing the mind. The second one's going to be on restoring the heart. Okay. One thing that I am seeing, and again, I was just confronted with it again today is that people really do not understand what love is. Okay, what do you mean? Well, they think that they, 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 can, they confuse. Okay, well, the Bible teaches us that number one, God is love. Mm -hmm. And then First Corinthians 13 breaks down all the attributes of love. Mm -hmm. Now, throughout the scriptures, you're going to see examples of that and different uh, elements of that expressed all throughout. But he really makes it very, the Apostle Paul really made it very simple. Love is patient. 
love is kind. Love is not boastful. Love is not arrogant. Love is not abusive with its speech. Love uh, is truth. Um, so what I will see is women that are going through a toxic relationship. They'll be like, but he apologizes to me every time. Um, my church tells me I have to just be more patient. My church tells me uh, I just have to suck it up and pray harder. Mm -hmm. um, one girl was even getting ready to give up on God because she couldn't understand why God would have her in this relationship. Yes. Okay. And her husband was being terrible to her, calling her wicked, evil names. And somehow she believed that God wanted her in that. And I'm like, no, love is patient. Love is kind. Love is gentle. Love endures. Love endures, which means love is going to endure whatever weakness you're experiencing. So <laughs> love doesn't mean you're going to endure being punched in the face over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, there, if people really understood the nature of love, then they're going to understand the nature of God. Okay. And they're going to understand that God does not want them in a relationship where they're being slowly poisoned every single day. Yeah. Okay. And that they are valuable because of them being a creation of God. And always almost the royalty that you talked about before. Yes. 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 And that love knows when to say no. Love doesn't allow another person. You know, there was this character in a TV series um, that was an interesting char character. He was, he had been trained in this form of martial arts that, but part of the training was that you never, you never go to hurt the person, but you do not allow them to hurt you either. Mm -hmm. So he would say, I don't want to hurt you, but I'm not going to allow you to hurt me. Because that isn't right either. If I were to allow you to hurt me, I'm actually damaging you. So out of my love for you, I will not allow you to hurt me. Mm -hmm. And it was a totally new way of looking at boundaries and, and dynamics in relationships. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So if, if you were to talk a little bit about your ministry, is it about mm -hmm. this? Is it like, what do you want? What do you want to achieve with it? What are you? Um, what's in your heart? <laughs> oh, what say again? What's in your heart? What, what did God put in your heart about this ministry? Well, social media is a double edged sword. Oh, yes. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you definitely understand. And as and it, it can be either a channel of toxicity and poison, or it can be a channel of life. And what I want Breathe Life Ministries to be is a haven where people can count on coming and seeing words of life. So it's about providing a space where worship and words of life are a constant flow. Okay. And so what I've been, what I do is I, if I, um, I I've um, interviewed worship leaders, um, I post worship um, from different, avenues, different musicians, different artists. 
Um, uh, I, I, I have been a worship leader for many years, but God seems to be transferring me into a different lane now. Um, but I still very much appreciate and value worship. So as much as I can, I post it. Mm -hmm. um, then I bring people in that are going to empower people like you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, I love what you, I love your, your mindset, how everything that you, you bring is very, you can put it into practice right now. Yes. everything that you you offer you can literally put it into practice as soon as you hear it mm -hmm. i love that that is so powerful and life-giving uh, my friend yesterday she's a worship leader but she also does um she spends time with people mentoring them in the word and praying with them and helping them identify pain points that are holding them back um so that's what I what I what I want to bring to Breathe Life Ministries is voices that speak life. And it, go ahead. it comes back to what we started at the beginning yeah. that you were saying that the word of God gives life. Yes. So you almost you want it to flow out of you and mm -hmm. on this page and the whole ministry. It's like just the word of God flowing, flowing yes. into people's lives and their hearts. Yes, yes, equipping them empowering them building them up yeah letting them you know another scripture that has been transformative in my life is from second corinthians and i can't think of the exact the exact reference to it but it's paul telling people he goes not that we consider ourselves adequate but he has made us adequate yes our, we don't have to be that everything. Mm -hmm. God equips us for exactly what we need in that moment. Yes. To yeah. me, it's important to always return to Christ and his redemptive work. And he's done it. It's, yes. not, it's not us. It's his work. And he makes us princesses. Yes. <laughs> it's, not, yes. it's not we. It's not we. Yes. It's him. It's him that's doing it. Yes. Yes. Is there any final message you want to send to your people? What just tell them a little bit about your program that you know this the structure? Um, let's see. I guess what I would encourage people to do is just I have something there every day, and it's something different every day. It's a, so you're never going to get bored coming to the Breathing <laughs> Ministries page. There's always something new. And um, look through the archives too, because there is literally now probably hundreds of episodes of different things that may be exactly what you need to hear, um, either through one of the interviews or one of the Transform Tuesdays, or when I first started doing this, it was Monday Morning Live. Um, but they, they're all archived. I save everything. So, you know, if you're looking for something to just build you up because you're feeling down, you need, you need a pep talk or just um, an inspiration. Yeah, I think you can probably find it there. <laughs> Donna, thanks so much. You did quite well in the hot seat. Just to, <laughs> just to remind everybody, this was my idea. Donna didn't yes. ask for me to do it. I said, let's do it. So yes, it, it was. It came from me. It's not her being boastful or anything. I said, I want to know more about you and let your, your, your people following you get to know you better. I really appreciate it. And please look Risa up if you are looking for practical words of encouragement and mentoring she is just an invaluable resource so please look her up thank you so much and we will probably talk again it was nice talking to you my friend oh it was so good to talk to you too risa thank you thank you everybody love you much